Okay, and uh, welcome to part three of this video lecture series. We ended part two having looked at some South African statistical data and admittedly going through the descriptive statistics is not the most fun and exciting part of this course, but it was nevertheless uh, interesting to find out that our country had in fact grown over the last 10 years. I was quite excited wondering which other African country we had uh, claimed a part of, but alas, it was far less exciting and we had simply claimed some of the ocean. So that brings us to part three, which is talking about our different macroeconomic variables, how we measure them. So the variables we will be looking at are GDP, uh, growth, the business cycle, unemployment and inflation. But we will begin with GDP. So what is it? Why is it important? There are two ways of measuring it, an income approach and an expenditure approach. We will look at the difference between real GDP and nominal GDP. And then we'll talk ab uh, about some shortcomings when it comes to using GDP uh, for what we use it for. Great, so definition. GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a specific time period, usually one year. So there's a couple of important parts in this statement. The first is that we are dealing with market value. Market value means that it has an associated price, a price that is measured in monetary terms. Right? So in South Africa, we looked at, uh, in the previous part, we looked at a table which said that South African GDP was almost 3 trillion rand. So there we go, it's a market value, it is measured in rand terms rands being a monetary value right so it's a market value we're talking about goods and services okay and they are final goods and services what that means is that intermediate goods and services are not included in other words if you buy um, something from the shop something exciting like an iron right like an iron for ironing, ironing your clothing uh, if you buy that iron, right, and the value of that iron is 100 rand, then GDP in South Africa goes up, or when that iron was created and sold, GDP in South Africa went up by 100 rand. Okay? We don't include the fact that there was a piece of metal valued at 5 rand, there was a piece of plastic, there was an electrical cord, all of those had value, and the value of all those things might have been 50 rand. Right? But we assume that that value is included in the final price of that iron. So when we buy it for 100 rand, we are already implicitly including the price of the piece of metal in the bottom and the electrical cord and the plug and all the other bits and pieces that go into the iron. So that is what we mean by final and what we mean when we say we don't include intermediate products. What we mean is we don't say the price of the iron is 100 rand. Then we add the price of the plug and the electrical cable, which was say five rand, and add that to our 100 rand to make it 105 rand, plus the price of the piece of metal, plus the plastic, blah, 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 blah. And finally we have some product that's worth a thousand rand. No, it's 100 rand includes all the intermediate steps in making the final product. So it's only the final value that we are interested in. Of course, these are things that are produced within our country, right? Produced within South Africa must be produced, must be in South Africa, which means there are no second-hand sales included. Or, if I am living off a social grant and I get given money by the government, that does not get included in GDP. That is not something that was produced within the country. It was simply transferred from one person to another. Okay. So why is it important? Well, we use it to assess economic performance. Government, being what it is, likes to meddle in our lives, likes to, you know, have its say, likes to get things done. What GDP does is it, is it allows us to have a measure of how well the, con the economy performed uh, in relation to others, or even in real terms, in, ter uh, in terms of what we can consume, our wealth, things like that. So, as an example, it's nice to go and take a look at your bank account. There's that value at the bottom of your bank account. It gives you, well, it's usually nice to look in your bank account. Sometimes you get horrible shocks, but 
there's a number at the bottom and that number gives you an idea of how well you as an individual are doing. Well, GDP, the measure of GDP is like that bank balance. The higher the GDP number, the better the economy is doing. Essentially, the higher that number, the more money each person in the economy on average has. The more money each person in the economy has on average is a, a, a it's an okay indication of how well people are doing. It's certainly a good indication of how well they are doing financially. Maybe not a good indication of how well they are doing in terms of things like health or happiness. No, but we'll talk more about that. So if we can assess our GDP performance, what that does is that gives us, or gives the government, an idea of how it should be interfering in the economy, how it should be redirecting resources from one place to another, what it should be taxing, what it should be subsidizing, what it should be encouraging, right? In other words, it has policy implications. If we know how, uh, how well we're doing in our GDP, that has policy implications. Because essentially, you can't manage what you can't measure. So first of all, we need to measure how well the economy is doing, and then we can step back and say, okay, what do we need to do to try and make it run better? Assuming that the government is going to make it run better. Okay, let's leave the video there.